Hello friends, welcome to my class. This is Orani Saikya here. We are going to discuss Mughal paintings. The Mughal period is considered the second classical age after the Gupta age because of their spectacular cultural development. It was not only a period of experiment and innovation, but also a period of continuation and culmination of those processes that had their origin in the rule of Delhi Sultans. Mughal court paintings provide an insight into the reigns of the Mughal emperors. It evolved from the Persian school of miniature painting with Hindu, Buddhist and Jain influences. The spirit of synthesis was very much visible in the Mughal paintings. Let's start with the nature of the Mughal art. During the Mughal period, an overwhelming number of refined and luxury items were produced for the ruling elite. These artifacts and a wide range of other aspects of court life reflected the refinement of visual senses. Artistic excellence was given a priority in the Mughal court. The Mughals made a distinctive contribution in the field of painting. They introduced secular themes in art. The subjects were battlegrounds, court scenes, receptions, legendary stories, hunting scenes, wildlife and portraits. The Mughal painters also introduced many new colors and new forms. It was a blending of three distinct traditions court painting of Safavid Iran, indigenous Indian devotional manuscript illumination, and Indo-Persian or Sultanate painting, which is itself a hybrid of Persian and local Indian styles. The Mughal pictures were small in size and they are therefore known as miniature paintings. The glow or halo behind the Mughal emperors, as shown in the portraits, reveals the prevailing idea that the power of the kings came directly from the god. The Mughal art did not represent the Indian emotions and the scenes from the daily life of an India. Rather, it remained confined to the Mughal court. Apart from Persian Book of Fables, Themes from the Mahabharata and the Ramayana were also selected. The Mughal painting was at its ultimate perfection under the fourth Mughal emperor Jahangir. He had a very unique perception of painting. It became a fashion in the Mughal school of art during the reign of Jahangir that in a single painting, different artists painted the face, the body, and the feet of a person. Paintings depicting the foreign ambassadors signifies the active trade connections of the Mughal rulers with foreign countries. There was almost no female representation in the paintings of the imperial courts. It denotes that females were rarely permitted to appear in open courts. The Mughal painters had created a living tradition of painting, which continued to work in different parts of the country even after the disappearance of the Mughal glory. Viewers, just look at this collage of Mughal paintings. This reflects the spirit of the Mughal art. Let's look at the Mughal art under Akbar. Under the reign of Akbar, the Mughal painting evolved and developed at a rapid pace. The earliest example of the Mughal painting is the Tutinama. Tutinama literally translates to Tales of a Parrot. It is an episodic Persian story divided into 52 parts. Akbar commissioned 250 miniature paintings that narrated Tutinama in a very artistic manner. 
Another important artwork of the reign of Akbar is an unusual manuscript, Dastani Amir Hamja. It is better known as Hamja Nama, which has 1400 paintings on cloth involving over a hundred artists. Influence of European paintings was seen on the Mughal paintings since the later years of Akbar's reign. Just look at these two paintings. This one painting is from the Hamjanama and the other one is from the Tutinama. Let's look at the Mughal art under Jahangir. The Mughal painting reached a high level of elegance and richness under Jahangir. He possessed sensitivity to nature, sharp perception of human character, and artistic mind. All his outlook expressed itself in an unmatched patronage of painting. Tujuk e Jahangiri, which was the memoir of Jahangir, tells about his great interest in arts and his efforts of achieving scientific correctness in the rendering of flora and fauna. The war scenes, portraits, narratives, and storytelling prevalent in Akbar style were overtaken during the reign of Jahangir by minute details and refined rendering of lavish court scenes, aristocracy, royal personalities, as well as character traits and distinctiveness of flora and fauna. Under Jahangir, Lahore attracted craftsmen from all over Asia tile makers, weavers, carvers, and miniaturists. Mansoor was the great name in this field. Artists also arrived from Persia at a rapid clip. The works included pages from the Quran illuminated and decorated with tiny flowers and geometric designs, miniature battle scenes, and paintings by rare artists. Jahangir employed Akarija, a well-known Iranian painter, and his son Abul Hassan to achieve unparalleled sophistication in painting. Some of the historians claim that Jahangir had the sense to distinguish the work of each artist separately even if in a single picture. Inspired by the emperors, the nobles and the provincial officials also patronized the artists. The artists who were employed in the imperial government were known as the first grade artists and their works are known as the imperial Mughal painting. Now this is a portrait of Jahangir and look at the hello behind the face. These are two other paintings. One is by Manohar and the right one is by Abul Hassan. Both these are Mughal paintings during the reign of Jahangir. Jahangir in Darbar is a masterpiece from the Jahangir Nama. This painting is attributed to both Manohar and Abul Hassan. It depicts the royal court of Jahangir who was surrounded by his nobles. Now let's look at the Mughal art under Shah Jahan. Under Shah Jahan, the greatest work of miniature painting is the Pad Shah Nama. It was a 10 inch wide book with 478 pages of text handwritten on a golden flecked paper. Padshah Nama literally means chronicle of the king of the world. It bore history of the first 10 years of Jah Jahaz reign. It contained 44 paintings and two illuminations of major events such as battles, court scenes, executions and hunts. Most paintings measure 9 by 13 inches. Some of the paintings are so detailed that they must have taken years to paint. 
Shah Jahan encouraged artists to create magnificent works that were a blend of imagination and documentation. Idealization and great stylization were preferred over naturalistic rendering and accurate depiction. The artworks produced under Shah Jahan concentrated on subliminal qualities and exalted beautification, which was created by the use of jewel-like colors, perfect rendering, and intricate fine lines. The higher concepts in the painting were given much prominence. Imperial portraits with glorious titles were painted to present the personality of the emperor himself. So this is a Mughal era painting of Shah Jahan by Mir Hashim. These are two other paintings. One there is a very minute, so minutely detailed scene of a royal procession and other one there are a few birds of different species of birds. Shah Jahan was fascinated more with architecture than painting. He reduced the number of imperial artists to one-third. It is true that Shah Jahan's reign saw the beginning of the end of the great period of Mughal painting. He liked calligraphy. The most famous calligraphist of his time who had influenced the court was Mir Hashim. Shah Jahan was not only an admirer of music, he himself was a singer of good standing. Two of his vocalists at his court were Ram Das and Mahapatra. And as we know, he was known as the architect king. Poets and historians also adorned his court. Sanskrit literature flourished under Shah Jahan. Now coming to the conclusion, the Imperial Mughal painting represents one of the most celebrated art forms of India. It evolved in India during the rule of various Mughal emperors. The Mughal paintings portray the life of rulers, the political and social conditions, and courtly customs. They are significant source of medieval Indian history. Thank you, viewers.